Suppose that we have a flat surface of area A and forces are exerted at right angles to this surface. Now on some parts of the surface the force may be greater than on other parts. Now we can consider the resultant of all these forces and the resultant is easy to find because they're all perpendicular to this surface so um, the sum of these forces will be perpendicular to the surface. So we add up all these forces, we just add the magnitudes since they're all pointing in the same direction and uh, we get one big force, the resultant, acting at right angles to the surface. Let's call the magnitude of this force F. Now the average pressure on the surface is defined to be the force per unit area. To work that out we take the magnitude of the force which is F and divide by the area. So we could consider a unit area of this surface, that is an area of one meter squared. We can um, just take a square of side one meter. You could imagine a square of side one meter. So its area is one meter squared. So we are interested in, in the average um, force, if you like, on each square meter of this area. So for example, if F is 10 newtons, and if A is, say, 8 meters squared, then on average, the force on each square meter of this surface is going to be 1.25 newtons. So 1.25 newtons per square meter. 1.25 newtons on average is the force on each square meter of the surface. Of course on some square meters the force is more than 1.25, on others it's less. This is just an average. Now we can also write this as 1.25 nm to the power of minus 2. We can bring up the m squared and this can be written also as 1.25 pascals. So we write PA for Pascal. That's the unit of pressure. So 1 Newton per square meter is 1 Pascal. According to Wikipedia, 1 Pascal is the pressure exerted by a dollar bill resting flat on a table. Now I don't know what the equivalent pressure exerted by a 5 euro bill resting on a table is but you know we can imagine that 1 pascal is a very small pressure. It's so small in fact that when we measure pressure we usually work in kilopascals. So 1 kilopascal is a thousand pascals. Let's suppose that the force F is evenly distributed over this surface. Okay so that means that the component vectors all have the same magnitude. So all these green vectors have the same magnitude or length and uh, um, the density of them over the surface is constant. So we don't have a load of them in one corner and if, you know very few in another corner. Okay these vectors are evenly spread out over the surface. Um, we could imagine making these vectors even smaller in magnitude and you know increase the density of them if we make them smaller in magnitude. But we get the picture. The force is evenly spread out over this surface. So now rather than talking about average pressure we could just refer to pressure on the surface. The pressure, uh, the force is evenly spread out so each square meter has a force of 1.25 newtons acting on it. So it doesn't matter which square meter we take the same force is acting on it, whether we take this one here or this one here, it doesn't matter. And it doesn't matter how small the unit is either, it doesn't have to be a square meter of course. We could imagine, you know, a square millimeter of area, which is much smaller. And we, we will find that the force exerted on a square millimeter of area doesn't change, it's the same everywhere. If the pressure is constant on the surface. Now, in general, when we talk about the pressure on a surface due to a force, 
we are talking about the perpendicular component of the force. Well, the component of the force that's perpendicular to the surface. So let's suppose that we have a surface like this and we have a vector acting not at right angles. Um, but you know, let's say at an angle of 45 degrees to a line that's perpendicular to the surface. Okay, so this line is at right angles to the surface. Okay, it's at right angles in every direction to the surface. So we have um, some force acting in a direction that's at 45 degrees to this line. So if we want the pressure on this surface due to this force, we would have to consider the component of this force in the direction perpendicular to the surface, this component here. So if our force is magnitude F, um, to get the pressure on the surface, we need to look at this component, which is F cos 45 degrees. So if our surface has area A as before, um, the pressure on it is the force acting on it, F cos 45, divided by the area. Obviously, as we can see, F cos 45 is less than F. So the pressure on the surface depends on the angle at which the force ex exerts itself on the surface. Again, if this force is evenly distributed throughout the surface, we can talk about the constant pressure on the surface. If this force is not evenly distributed throughout the surface, then this becomes the average pressure on the surface. Finally, we need to note that pressure is a scalar quantity. So more accurately, in our definition, we could say that the average pressure on a surface is the magnitude of the perpendicular component of vector F per unit area per meter squared. So we are only interested in the amount of um, perpendicular force acting on a square meter. Of course, that the direction of the force is perpendicular. The force associated with the pressure has direction. Force is a vector quantity. But um, when we're talking about pressure, we're only talking about the amount of force per square meter. So there's no direction associated with pressure.